To solve for dt, we can first square both sides of the equation, which would get rid of the square root. And of course, we get just 1 on the right side. And then we can multiply both sides by delta x squared and also uh, delta z squared. Then if we pull out the common dt squared, we're going to get delta t squared, c squared, delta x squared plus delta z squared. And that has to be less than delta x squared times delta z squared. Then if we divide the entire equation by c squared delta x squared plus delta z squared, we're going to get delta t squared has to be less than delta x squared delta z squared over everything on the left side. We can simplify the right side of this expression by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by delta x squared and delta z squared. So we're going to divide um, both the numerator and the denominator by this. So we're not changing the value on the right side if we're dividing both the numerator and the denominator by this. So then we'll have delta t squared is less than or equal to 1 over c squared, 1 over delta x squared plus 1 over delta z squared. And so finally, then we can just take the square root. So we have delta t has to be less than 1 over c square root of 1 over delta x squared plus 1 over delta z squared. So this is the two-dimensional uh, current stability limit. We can't run a two-dimensional FDTD model with a dt set hi any higher than this, or it will go unstable. Now, if we take delta x and set it equal to delta z, meaning we have cubic cells, then we can simplify this even further. We can say delta t has to be less than or equal to delta over c squared of 2 which is the same as a one-dimensional stability limit, except we just have this added square root of 2 in the denominator. So this means for two-dimensional sim simulations, s must be less than or equal to 1 over square root of 2. So now, go ahead and try setting s just below this limit. So set s equal to 0.99 times 1 over square root of 2. And in your two-dimensional FTTD code, and let's see, th so this turns out to be, it's about 0.7. Don't put in 0.7, but that's what it turns out to be. And it's quite a bit larger than the 0.5 that we were using before. So go ahead and try this value and see if it's still stable. If it is, run your code for 100 time steps. So we can see the wave propagate further away from the source. 